Today we're going to talk about suspension dynos. What is a suspension dyno? Well basically it's a tool to measure damping force at varying shock shaft or fork shaft speeds. It's much like a engine dyno in that you're measuring force generated, in the case of an engine dyno horsepower, um, against speed. Exactly the same. Basically it cycles the suspension units at predetermined speeds in both compression, which is bump, and in rebound, which is re-extension of the shock absorber or the front fork. What we can measure on this dyno, we can totally relate to what happens on road or on track. High-end suspension manufacturers employ the use of dynos to help develop settings that are model specific and suitable for the application. If these guys employ dynos, then why don't suspension service shops also have a dyno? It's basically a tool of trade so you can graphically illustrate the effect of either external or internal changes to shock absorbers or forks. Our new purchase here is a Royrig suspension dyno, which is recognised as the industry standard. And importantly for us, it's exactly the same equipment as used by Olins in their main service shops in Northern Europe. This is all obviously computer driven. So we create a template for the test. We select the type of test. There are many tests we can do, but we're going to demonstrate the most common test, which is to generate a force versus velocity curve for both compression and rebound. We input all of the speeds for the shock to be run at, which in this case, we're going to do a run at 10 millimeters per second, followed by 20, 30, 40, 50, 75, 100, 200, 300 and 400 millimetres per second. So basically initial acceleration squat control through to what we call curb strike, riding of rump bumps. And we're now on the run screen and the first thing we must do, because each shock is a different weight or forks are a different weight, is we must zero the load cell to calibrate it, easy as that, and then we prompt the motor to go to bottom dead centre, so we're at a start position. At that point then, we will actually move the cradle so that we can centralise the shock absorber between the two clevises. We're giving it three millimetres of preload to make sure that it doesn't fully extend in the dyno. After cycling the motor, we ensure that the dyno is at bottom dead centre and it's ready to run. So the next step is we hit start test and prompts us for data on the shock absorber, which I'll now enter. We have now entered the notes for this particular test run, uh, the type of shock absorber that it is, the uh, notes on valving, internal construction, um, and the clicker settings that we're going to dyno it at. And we'll confirm that. And we are now to hit run, and it will go through 10 speeds and steps automatically, which you will now evidence. If anything goes wrong, we're able to hit an emergency stop button. So at this point, it's about to run it at 10 millimetres per second. It will go through something like three to four cycles for every run. Now running at 20 millimetres per second. These velocities basically simulate what we call ride height squat control, initial ride height control. Now running at 30 millimetres per second. And at that speed, it's still running on the bleeds. It's not opening the shim stacks. That concludes the run. We now save the file and it gives us a damping curve. This is the resultant damping curve. The x-axis is the speed of the shock absorber shaft all the way up to 400 millimetres per second, which is what we call curb strike velocity. The, on the y-axis, the top part of the graph is the compression damping curve, and the bottom half is the rebound damping curve. We also have these uh, force values tabulated in numbers as well. So that's basically what is involved in doing a dyno run, it's as simple as that. 
But what we will do, we'll do a very quick demonstration. We'll just make a, a clicker setting change and rerun the shock absorber. So what I'll do is I'll go in, say we'll go in four clicks on rebound. One, two, three, four. It will try five clicks inwards on compression. Because we already have the template created, we just hit test again and we can fill the data from the last test and just modify the settings for both compression and rebound. And we are now testing again. How does what you see on the graphs translate to, I suppose, what you're trying to achieve? Like, like what you, you got you there yeah. is what the rider feels, that's the initial squat coming off the turns. If, if there's a lot of squat, that'll be a weak curve, mm. right? Now basically the first part of that is on the bleed jet. Yeah. You've got what's called the nose of the curve. Then you've got the knee, which is where the shim stacks start to open. Yeah. Then you've got the slope, which is just basically ever increasing force curves. But is it a case of this curve works best for Memfield pipe thing or this curve? Yeah, we'll have different curves for, uh, for different tracks yeah. and obviously different bikes and different riders and different tyres. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the variables are incredible. But this particular shot, we've actually got a car dump valve in it uh, for curb striking. It works really well. Yep. And you can see the rebound, we've just got more force everywhere. This is very much a work in process at this time, but we have machined up a whole load of adapters so we can actually dyno forks either individually with a carriage cradle for one fork only, or to dyno both forks at the same time. Given that, especially in a lot of sports bikes, they're clamped so firmly with big diameter axles and big diameter triple clamps, the forks essentially become one entity when they're in the bike. Given also that there are more and more forks on the market where one side does compression damping and the other side wholly does rebound damping, it makes sense and it certainly quickens the time to dyno both at once. This pretty much concludes our presentation of this new and exciting equipment. It's a huge commitment on our part and over time we'll be building up a huge database which will be useful as a reference. Uh, it's certainly lifted the game immensely of what happens in the motorcycle suspension industry in New Zealand. For any further information on this exciting piece of equipment uh, or anything suspension related, please don't hesitate to contact Kiwi Suspension Solutions at any time. We are more than happy to help.